The new scramble for Africa. What do they really want from Africa? The first notable rise in foreign interest in Africa, known as the scramble, began in the 19th century when European invaders divided up the continent and grabbed Africans' land. The second was during the Cold War, when East and West fought for the support of newly independent African states. While America backed regimes that professed to promote capitalism, the Soviet Union supported tyrannical Marxists. Currently, there is a third, less harmful surge. According to the UN, there will be more Africans than Chinese by 2025, which has attracted the attention of outsiders who understand the significance of and continuous growth of the continent. Around the world, corporations and governments are seeking to improve their diplomatic, strategic, and commercial ties. The amount of involvement abroad is unprecedented. Between 2010 and 2016, more than 320 embassies were established in Africa, possibly the largest embassy construction boom in history. Additionally, there is a strengthening of military ties. The United States and France are providing technology and military support for the fight against jihadism in the Sahel. China presently supplies more weaponry to sub-Saharan Africa than any other country, and it also shares defense technology with 45 other countries. Russia has signed 19 weapons contracts with African countries since 2014. Arab countries with large oil reserves are building bases on the Horn of Africa and using mercenaries from Africa. This, in our opinion, is the new race for Africa. Major superpowers like America, China, and Russia all desire to rule Africa at the present time. The race for Africa right now isn't about selling African labor to other countries. Instead, it's about how the European Union, the United States, Russia, China, and other global powers are battling to make deals with Africa in order to expand their geopolitical influence on the continent. Stay with us to learn more, and if you're just joining us, We'd appreciate it if you'd like, share, and most importantly, comment so we can hear what you think about the latest race for Africa. Who are these powers that are scrambling for Africa and how do they go about it? The European Union. The colonization of Africa by European nations in the late 19th and early 20th centuries is known as the scramble for Africa. During this time, European nations including Britain, France, Germany, and Belgium fought to expand their imperial holdings by claiming colonies in Africa. As European powers forced their political and economic systems on African nations, this competition frequently resulted in war and exploitation. The scramble for Africa had a huge impact on the continent, influencing current political boundaries as well as persistent economic and social problems. Native populations were frequently forcibly removed during European colonization, and European political and economic institutions were imposed on African nations, in addition to the extraction of natural resources. Along with significant upheaval and eviction, this resulted in the depletion of land resources and cultural traditions. In order to assist Morocco in making the transition to a green economy and the digital era, the European Union plans to invest 1.6 billion euros in the nation. When the head of the European Commission visited Morocco, this idea was unveiled. The European Union made an unusual choice in this case because it rarely invests heavily on infrastructure outside of its boundaries. But the EU is deliberately attempting to change the balance of power not only in Morocco but also throughout Africa. The European Union's planned Global Gateway Program which will see the EU invest up to 150 billion euros to help the financing of green energy and digital infrastructure projects in Africa, kicks off with the 1.6 billion euros promised to Morocco. The project's entry into the game of global geopolitical power is a given. The topic of why the European Union is making such a large expenditure during this time of economic unpredictability and the primary drivers China remain after this massive investment. China has been able to increase its strategic influence on the continent through its Belt and Road Plan, which involves significant infrastructural investments. European powers have continued to exercise political and economic influence over African countries in the years after the scramble for Africa. Through its economic policies and development aid programs, the European Union has significantly influenced African policy. 
Although some have argued that the European Union's policies do not effectively meet the needs and concerns of African countries, the European Union has come under fire for its attitude to Africa. Countries like France have been criticized for being exploitative, and the French government is using its colonial currency to fund a modern-day slavery program in its former colonies. In general, both in Africa and around the world, the legacy of the scramble for Africa is still being felt. For the continent and its people, the effects of European colonization, including ongoing economic and social problems, remain a significant challenge. It will be crucial to solve these issues and make sure the rewards of engagement are distributed fairly as the European Union and other global powers continue to engage with Africa. As we ride on, please like and share this video. In order to join the Africa Reloaded community, subscribe to our channel as well. Enable notifications to receive alerts whenever we upload new videos. Russia Russia and Africa have been involved since the Soviet era, when Russia provided military and economic assistance to many African countries. Recent Russian engagement in Africa has been primarily driven by strategic and economic factors. Russia has worked to deepen its economic relations with African countries through investments in natural resources like oil and minerals, as well as the shipment of weapons and other military gear. Russia's efforts in Africa have drawn criticism, and some detractors have voiced concerns about possible detrimental effects on the economy and communities of Africa. In the case of Russia's armaments trade with Africa, for instance, there have been claims of corruption and illegal activity, as well as worries about the viability of African economies that are highly reliant on the sale of natural resources. Some people have also condemned Russia's involvement in African crisis, claiming that it has fueled unrest and violence. Despite these reservations, Russia's presence in Africa has increased recently. To improve economic and political ties with African leaders, Russian President Vladimir Putin organized a meeting in Sochi, Russia, in 2019. Additionally, Russia has attempted to increase its military footprint on the continent of Africa by taking part in peacekeeping missions there, such as those in the Central African Republic and Sudan. Russia's interactions with Africa are intricate and varied overall. It will be crucial to keep a careful eye on Russia's activities in Africa as they develop and make sure they serve the interests of both Russia and Africa. Before we go any further, we kindly ask that you like and subscribe to our channel because this is the only way it will develop and we will be able to make more engaging videos for you. The United States of America The United States was the first country to openly denounce Chinese engagement in Africa. Washington is starting to realize that Africa has a big economic and investment potential. The December 2022 U.S.-Africa Summit is a sign that the United States is starting to wake up. The United States' engagement in Africa spans many years, and it has changed as a result of its presence there. The United States has prioritized advancing economic growth and development, bolstering democratic institutions, and resolving security issues in Africa in recent years. Through programs like the African Growth and Opportunity Act, the U.S. has helped African nations with their development while simultaneously attempting to boost commerce and investment. Along with providing aid for economic development, the United States has also worked to alleviate Africa's security issues. This has included constructing military outposts as in Djibouti, participating in peacekeeping missions and counterterrorism initiatives, and giving African nations military aid and training. The United States has also contributed to promoting stability and peace on the continent through mediating disputes. Although some have argued that the U.S. policies do not sufficiently meet the needs and concerns of African countries, the U.S. has come under fire for its approach to Africa. Instead, the U.S. is attempting to impose its social norms and policies on Africans, attempting to persuade African officials to accept and legalize practices that Africans do not deem appropriate for their continent. Other global powers like China and Russia, which also wanted to expand their influence in Africa, presented competition for the U.S. Dr. Eric Hanna Chan Barikuo, a former ambassador of AU to the United States, 
thinks that the United States is losing the argument because it is disrespectfully attempting to direct Africans and their governments. She contends that there was no agenda when African leaders were invited to the U.S.-Africa summit. They simply went to hear what the United States had to say. In general, the United States keeps a substantial presence in Africa, and over the coming years, its role in the continent is expected to evolve. In order to advance its interests on the continent and ensure that any decisions it makes benefit both the U.S. and Africa, it will be necessary for the U.S. to take into account the viewpoints and needs of African nations. The People's Republic of China Some have referred to the recent expansion of China's influence and investment in Africa as a scramble for Africa. Referring to the 19th and early 20th century colonization of the continent by Europeans. Although there may be tensions between China and other countries with interests in Africa, the term scramble implies rivalry or conflict, whereas China's presence in the continent is primarily motivated by its own economic and strategic interests. China invests in natural resources like oil and minerals, builds infrastructure like roads, railroads, and ports, and offers development aid in the form of loans and grants. These initiatives have drawn criticism, and some detractors have expressed worries about possible detrimental effects on African economies and societies. Interaction between China and Africa extends back to the Cold War era. Recently, China has taken a number of steps to deepen its political and economic ties with African countries, including trade agreements, monetary investments in infrastructure projects, and humanitarian aid. One of the most noteworthy examples of China's growing involvement in Africa is the Belt and Road Program, a huge infrastructure development project that aims to connect Asia, Europe, and Africa through a network of roads, railways, and ports. China has agreements with various African nations through the program to build roads, railroads, and other infrastructure projects, as well as to offer financial support. Kenya, Egypt, and Ethiopia are a few of the nations that have agreements with China under this initiative. One of the main critiques levied against China is the fact that its involvement in Africa is largely focused on boosting Chinese interests rather than the development of Africa. Critics claim that Chinese corporations frequently exploit resources from Africa and that Chinese infrastructure projects frequently use Chinese labor and materials without sufficiently boosting the local economy. In addition, some people have raised concern over the conditions of the loans and grants given by China as well as the possibility of China becoming a debtor for African nations. Africa has faced both chances and challenges as a result of China's scramble for Africa. While Chinese investment has increased infrastructure and access to capital, it has also raised questions about the sustainability of African economies in the long run and the possibility of exploitation. As China's role in Africa grows, it will be vital to allay these concerns and ensure that the benefits of Chinese investment are dispersed fairly. Turkey Additionally, Turkey is expanding its influence across the continent. The increase in Turkish missions on the continent from 12 in 2009 to 44 today reflects the president's diplomatic strategies. Erdogan has traveled to 28 different African nations over his 38 trips since taking office, making him the world leader with the most trips to the continent. The trade ties between Ankara and the African nation have greatly improved as a result of this diplomatic endeavor. Over the previous 20 years, commerce between Turkey and Africa expanded from $5.4 billion to $25.3 billion in 2017. 19 African nations, including Morocco, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Ghana, Mali, Algeria, Djibouti, Senegal, Kenya, and South Africa, received military aid from Turkey. India India is another country that has been covertly boosting its economic clout in Africa. The country is currently the third largest trading partner on the continent and has recently raised the number of its diplomatic missions there. Due to its common history as a colonial power, the usage of English and the presence of more than 3 million Indians in Africa, India believes it has a competitive advantage against China. Additionally, New Delhi claims that in contrast to China, 
which regularly imports laborers from its own country, Indian projects in Africa lay a great emphasis on hiring local people. There is little doubt that the U.S. perceives China's and Russia's expanding influence in Africa as a danger. Because it affords them more options, this is the time for African nations to embrace the competition for influence. By leveraging its resources and its 1.2 billion person market, the majority of whom are young people, Africa has the opportunity to accelerate its growth. To ensure a better future for the next generation, African youth must emerge from their slumber and embrace these chances right away. We need reliable contributions and partners. Africa again declines the opportunity to act as a venue for the confrontation of Chinese-American and European conflicts. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to Africa Reloaded to see more intriguing videos on the continent. To receive alerts when we upload a new video, don't forget to switch on notifications. Don't forget to leave a comment on this video.